Um, I mean, and that's, that's really for anyone that's watching to understand though, wherever you are, if you feel you're an elite person, you're a top producer, you're a, someone who's, who's trying to accomplish more break through that six figure, multiple six figure, seven figure ceiling of income that you need to look at something where you can capitalize and make money exponentially. Because if you're, if you can only sell this product, but you sell a lot of it, right. But you can sell, but you come over here and you can sell this and you can sell, a, you can have build a team to build a ton of it. Um, that's where leverage comes in. Grady Paulson here, Family First Life America. Uh, beyond excited to have Giovanna Galliano on with us today. Top producer, rising star agency manager, um, has a great story, which I'm excited to hear even more so about, but she's new to our company. How long have you been with us now? So technically I got all my contracting, everything done in December of last year, had my first sale in December, and then it was like right before the holidays. So started full-time January. We're going to hear her story here, but she sells virtually. Um, sells insurance, protects families, and has a, and, and one of the things I think I would notice about is her consistency, right? That's really how, how um, you know, Crystal Bulger, he, she works with Crystal, and, um, who's a phenomenal uh, speaker, trainer, coach, mentor, he's all around great guy, disciplined as all get out. But she got on my radar because she posts every single day selling. And when you see the same name pop up over and over and over and up, you're like, you know, that, that's that's one of the keys to life and the keys to success in anything is consistency, right? If we keep doing the same thing over and over, not only are we going to figure out the ways not to do it, we're going to figure out the best ways too, which is going to make us so good at it and then ultimately allow us to turn around and teach it. So I'm excited to have you on today. I would love to hear your story, learn more about you. And what's fun, guys, is she's going to share some of her sales training with us, which is helping her achieve the success she has. But at the same time, uh, towards the back end of the call, we're going to talk about recruiting and how she's building a business. So I'll pass it over to you for a minute. I'll be here for comedic relief and uh, we'll, we'll let you let you go. So yeah, how are you doing awesome. today? Doing well? I'm good. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Super grateful and happy to be here um, and honored. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, the, the, the honor is mine. Thank you for the <laughs> time. So love, love to hear more. Um, as far as, so hi, I'm Giovanna Galliano. Um, as he mentioned, I've been in the business pretty much full time since January. Um, prior to doing insurance, I actually had a mortgage background. So I worked in mortgage for about three or three and a half years. Um, did really well. I really, really enjoyed it. And of course, kind of after COVID and, you know, rates got super low, I kind of was just looking for a new opportunity. Um, prior to mortgage, I had a uh, medical background. I was in the medical field for about 10 years. I did um, insurance billing and I worked at a cancer research center. And that's kind of where I first got into a leadership role. Um, I had a team of about 15 that calculated costs for chemo and radiation based on insurance benefits. So kind of that financial-ish background. Um, and then I kind of took a leap of faith and got into mortgage and into the sales side, which I did not have any experience in. Um, so I was like, well, I mean, if I do really terrible, then I'll just go back to what I know. Um, and I ended up doing really well and I really loved it. Um, and then, as I mentioned, kind of COVID changed things after that. It was at a, a really, really high in mortgage during COVID. And then kind of after it came down really low and I was just kind of looking for a different opportunity. Um, I actually had someone say to me, they were like, you strike me as someone that would be an entrepreneur. And I never even thought about that. I was like, okay, like just kind of took it with a grain of salt. And then it just kind of never left my mind. And then this opportunity um, arose. One of a friend of a friend actually had told me about FFL. And so I kind of did some research. I wasn't really sure, you know, because I was like, well, that's like obviously scary self-employment and the whole entrepreneurship thing. And it kind of like came full circle one day. And I was like, holy crap, maybe this is like what that like dangling carrot was, you know, that somebody left me a couple of years ago. And I was like, well, let me like look into this. Um, and my boyfriend, he actually owns a meal prep service and Christo Bolger orders from him. And he had posted on social media about um, hiring agents. And so that's how I kind of then heard about FFL again. And I was like, oh my God, this is the same company that I was, you know, kind of looking into. 
Um, and so we had a call and, and we really connected and something just told me, I was like, I have to take this, take advantage of this opportunity. And so I did, and here we are never looking back. <laughs> so, um, that's kind of been my, my start, um, and kind of how I found out about FFL and, and the opportunity. For, for sure. So mortgages, so some communication background, right? Were you selling mortgages or were you processing? Yeah. So I was a loan officer. Um, so I worked at Chase Bank for about three and a half years. Um, and that was actually all over the phone, inbound, outbound calls. Um, it was actually kind of a very similar process to what, you know, clients do here. Like they go online, fill out an inquiry about wanting more information and same thing with mortgage. So clients would go online and request to be pre-qualified, you know, for a refi or for a home purchase. And then I would get their information. I would call them and basically go through financials, you know, credit, what they can qualify for. Um, and then, and then eventually, you know, pitch them options of rates. And then we do an online application, collect documents and get it into processing. So it's a very similar, like, uh, yeah, I guess process, if you will, um, with that, as far as with doing this, as far as people, you know, filling something out online and then me making an outbound call to them. So that is kind of what really attracted me to, um, just being like, oh, this would be a really nice kind of you know, transition, if you will, because I was already kind of used to that kind of system. That's cool. I mean, yeah. It, it, do you think that other mortgage brokers could do well here? Absolutely. You, yes. Like I think as point. far as definitely with Chase, like they taught us to come from more of a customer service kind of approach, not so much a salesy approach. Of course there are, you know, that's each individual. I think of who does better with what type of approach. Um, but yes, I think people in the mortgage industry, this is a perfect opportunity for you because they get the grind. They get that it's hard work, that what you put into it, you get out of it. And they also have a sense of understanding, you know, like the commission pay background of it. Cause that can be scary, you know, coming from a salary to 100% commission, like it's, you know, it's, a, it can be challenging, but, um, it's just something that you kind of learn and you know, kind of get used to over time. And I think, you know, once you really understand the opportunity and the amount of growth that you have of not only, you know, working for yourself and building a business, but just the leveling up of income opportunity in this role, like you, like people that are in mortgage will be like, wow, I thought I did good in mortgage. This is a whole different ball game. Like it's like times five on that. Mortgage. Is it, do you just have to sell more to make more? You have to just, I mean, instead of doing a hundred with mortgage, yeah. Yeah. It's all about kind of volume. Exactly. Yeah. You mm -hmm. more. So, and you know, you're not buying leads necessarily. So that aspect is a little bit different, but I think mortgage is similar. It's, you know, it's a, it's a skill set that you kind of learn how to talk to people and get them comfortable with you going over, you know, financials and, and talking about, you know, this is how your money's being allocated to your benefit towards principal. And then this is how your money's, you know, being allocated towards interest and kind of something that, you know, just comes along with financing, of course. But um, yeah, so I, I think that anybody in mortgage could definitely do this. And I think even have the opportunity to level up in so many different ways, um, not only just, you know, an income, but just learning a new trade, challenging yourself, um, you know, and really being able to help also, you know, people that you don't know, clients that are asking for your help, but also, you know, your warm market, your family, friends, and, you know, it becomes more of a personal thing when you're talking about this versus mortgage, like mortgage is still very personal to the client. But I think talking about under that financial umbrella and being able to truly help your family and put them in a better position that that's unmatched, like you can't get that in any other business, I don't think. I agree. I mean, like, so you think about mortgages, it's, it's very, it's transactional. There's a sales aspect of it, but if you've got the lowest rate and you answer the phone at most of the time, you're probably going to get the deal. If you, you know, as long as you didn't work right. on the phone. Right. Um, and as long as it makes sense for them, you know, then, right. and typically it does. Cause that's kind of, you know, the point of it. So fun thing, I think, and selfish and not, not selfish, but bias towards insurance is that like, you can start here doing whole life. And then you can add in term with mortgage and then you can move to IULs and then mm -hmm. you can to annuities and you can, every time you move, you add, you expand your portfolio and yeah. then you can go, I got really good at all these things. How about I teach people how to do it? And now you're duplicating yourself and you've gone from here to here and you get paid on the whole thing. And right. that's really where I love 
people like yourself who've come from another industry where you do well, you work hard, but then you go, you know, this is cool. Now, so, does everybody make it? No, it's entrepreneurship, right? But does everybody make it mortgages? I mean, it's it's skill set. I mean, I'm sure there's some low, there's there's top producers in mortgages, and there's people that just kind of plug holes and take and yeah. do a, do their job. And um, I mean, and that's that's really for anyone that's watching to understand though, wherever you are, if you feel you're an elite person, you're a top producer, you're a someone who's who's trying to accomplish more break through that six figure multiple six figure seven figure ceiling of income that you need to look at something where you can capitalize and make money exponentially because if you're if you can only sell this product but you sell a lot of it right but you can sell, but or you come over here and you can sell this and you can sell a, you can have build a team to build a ton of it um that's where leverage comes in right i always talk about and there's two ways to make money, talent or leverage, right? So maybe as a mortgage broker, you're very talented, right? You're right. quick, you're good, you're, you're smooth, you can get uncomfortable, you know, in three minutes, if they're if we're moving forward, you know, after five minutes, we're getting docs, you know, after eight, nine minutes, they love you. They're like, oh, my, my brother's thinking about buying a house, I'll refer him to you, right? Talent. Leverage is where you have 100 people selling underneath you, right? Leverage is chase. And so that's really what we can build here. Um, and so it's fun to see you. So let's talk about the beginning, right? So December, you got contracted fat holidays. No one wants to start a new business in the holidays. You don't, you, you can't, you can't call clients and drink eggnog. Right. I, you know, I, I don't want to do that. Right. Well, so, Merry Christmas. Are you yeah. ready to buy? <laughs> yeah. So but then, so you get started. What was your first month? Like, how did it go? Um, um so my first month wasn't, wasn't bad. Um, I think I did like 7,000 ish. Um, and then I remember my second month, I kind of came down a little bit. It was like about five, um, okay. where I, where things really took a turn for me was month five in May. Okay. Um, I think that I, I'm not, I, I think that honestly, I understood the logistics of kind of like how we talk about the circle of life of the business of when you really figure out your dial count, when you figure out your lead spend, when you figure out your lead flow, and your consistency and your schedule, and it all kind of comes together at one time. That was when I leveled up for sure. Like I hit my first 30 K month in May. Um, before that I was kind of coasting from, you know, March to May, I was kind of anywhere between like the 10 to 15 range. And I was like, what, and my biggest thing that I, again, and didn't really figure out until I asked for help from my mentors. And I'm like, let's map this thing out. Like, what am I doing? What can I be doing differently? How do I get it to the next level? And at that point, which, and for any of you that are new, if you are thinking about questioning on trying to like recruit in the beginning time, do not question it, just do it. Cause that was one thing that I did not do in the beginning. I didn't start until about May or June. Um, so one thing that changed for me is that I realized that I was not spending enough money on leads. Um, which I do about, you know, four or 5,000 now per month on leads and clear anywhere from 25 to 32 ish right now. Okay. Um, so which is a good ROI, but really I just wanted to make sure that I had the Don't, formula. Results not typical. Don't be tip trying to give me the look. And I was like, all right, results. We're putting asterisks here. Results oh, sorry. Typical. <laughs> don't be typical, but this is what's possible from someone who right. heard her story. Right. So continue on. No, you're good. Um, so what, what changed for me was really just figuring out my lead flow and, and spending enough money on leads. Um, uh, once I figured that out, it completely flipped for me, um, to where now I've been, you know, over that 25, 30 K mark, you know, moving forward, um, and have been, you know, going really well, but that I think really trying to figure out the formula of getting each aspect of the business in the right position and correct. That is when things kind of will come fully full circle for you. And some people that happens really earlier on in the business for me, it was a little bit later. And, oh. and I just had to kind of remind myself to I wouldn't say it later, your month five, your month five. I think I'm trying to remember this here, but I think it was my month five when I first hit 30 families. And so, okay. it just, but like, I love, I loved hearing that because you know what most people would have done in your first four months. What would Probably they have done? <laughs> yeah, that's quit. <laughs> Most people quit everything they do. They quit diets. They quit their marriages. 
they quit their goals, they quit everything. And that's most people. And most people aren't on this call right now trying to get better. Most people aren't watching this YouTube video. So we're talking to the people that are like you, that are like us, that are trying to break through and get through that ceiling. And so to hear that, you know, it was challenging, but you did self-reflection. You go, you look around, you go, if this person's doing that number and Mara's right in 842 in eight months, like, okay, so she's she's she can't be that much more skilled than I'm because I've got her word tracks. She's just getting more at bats. She gets she gets 27 pitches an, 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 an at bat versus most people get three, right? And that's really where when you start to up your lead spend and you also were exponentially growing your skill set because all of those experiences while you did the seven and the five and then the 10, 15, 10, 15 compounded and people don't, they don't account for that. You're, yeah. com you're compounding the wrong ways to do it and learning not to do it that way. And then you get to a point where like, okay, I'm selling more, but I just need more chances. And then you invest in leads. Right. So then from May, now what's, what have you been on? How's it been going? So May has been really good. I've stayed kind of within that same range per month right now. I've actually this month upped my lead flow and up my lead spend to see if I can get to that next level, okay. um, you know, with the combination of growing my team. Um, so, you know, there's still always challenges. Like obviously if, you know, the highs wouldn't be as high if there weren't, you know, lows. So I still, you know, kind of go through that, you know, roller coaster a little bit, if you will, but I've also, I think kind of finally now come to the understanding that there's always going to be kind of a ride that you're going to have to just go with it and figure it out. Um, so yeah, so for me, I'm just really trying to stay consistent um, and just keep that momentum going. I will say that I'll, I get a ton of help from my team and our culture and just the amazing relationships that we have within the business and personal that I think that that really helps keep everybody going. Um, and just kind of on a up uphill trajectory, if you will, um, because it can, you know, it can get difficult. It's not easy by any means. It's challenging. Like just, we said, you know, when it gets hard, a lot of people quit and tap out at that time. So the ones that don't are the ones that also come together, you know, like Christo, all of our leaders, all of our team. And I think all of us in our positive culture energy, we truly want to see each other win. Um, and like I said, we have a good personal relationship as well. And I think that that just helps mirror like the success in our business, um, in, in all of our businesses really. And I think that we just all kind of hold each other accountable, but also really support each other when, you know, it's like, dang, I'm having, you know, a low day or whatever it is. Like, I know I can call Christo and he's going to help bring me up and be like, this is just one of those days, you know, and then tomorrow's a new day, new opportunity, new outlook, new mindset. And I, I think that helps a lot. Yeah, and in business, you should have three people, a mentor you're learning from, a running buddy that you're comparing notes with mm -hmm. and trying to challenge each other, and then a mentee, someone that you're coaching as well. And that way you're constantly learning, fighting, comparing, battling, yeah. and then teaching what you've learned and trying to help someone else. So, all right, real quick, and then we'll jump into, I want to hear your um, sales, like what you, the words you say, right? Uh, but what leads are you running ballpark or, you know, you don't have to you know, so I, 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 I try to do some social media ads, um, here and there. Um, I do run ILC the one months. I really like the one months, honestly, cause they're really one greatly month. priced. One month um, oh, the one month old, I'm sorry. The one month aged, um, ILC leads. Um, those really kind of, Diamond, what was that? Which one? What are oh, they? the, they're called platinum now platinum. Okay, cool. They're, yeah. So I'll run the platinum ones. Um, I think it's good to, like we just said, always like sharpen your skill set and continue to be learning YouTube university all the way. But I also really like to make sure that like, I still get to experience like the rebuttals and the objections. And I feel like with leads that are a little bit more aged like that, you get good, like you get a good variety, I feel. So whenever there's a discount code, I always buy some of those. And that's just really, cause I feel like if you, like if you're, in a position where you're diversifying your leads and sometimes you have, you know, leads that are a little bit better than others and maybe you won't get as many objections or rebuttals, but I think it's really still important to kind of put yourself in that position where you're having to overcome those. Um, so that's why I'll buy like the aged ones here, you know, every so often, every month, you really, um, just to kind of keep that skill set sharpened for myself. Um, yeah. And I do a little bit of nectar here and there, I'll turn it on, but that's kind of 
pretty much it. Just, I mean, so then let's talk about your, um, your day or your week, right? So what is your, what does your day look like? What is your goal for the, for your day? Is it a, is it a dial goal? Is it a presentation goal? Is it a, or a dial connection presentation sales goal? I mean, you know, obviously sales, I want to write 10 families every day. Right. But then oh. at some point you've got to kind of, how do you, what is your goals when you're going into a day or a week? How do you set that up? Yeah. So, um, my goal for the day, like I definitely like to like write down my goals just so it's something that I can like visually see throughout the day. Um, but I try and hit, a, you know, at least two sales or five presentations or about, you know, four or 500 dials a day. Um, typically if you're getting a lot of presentations and you don't really make it to that many dials, you know, if you're doing a typical eight, nine hour day, um, but that's kind of the goals that I set for myself. I try to really focus on the productivity aspect of that being a win, not always a sale, just being a win, because there are going to be days that you don't get a sale. So you have to also be able to push through that and understand that you being productive and doing like money-making activities is still being productive and still winning, um, still having the conversations and, you know, kind of, I guess I look at all of my leads as I want to figure out every lead, are they a yes or are they a no? I know that not every lead is going to be a yes, but if I know that they're a no, then okay, I've got that one out of the way. I figured that out and, you know, kind of go on from there. Okay. So those are kind of the goals that I set for the day. Okay. Um, so what, then in a week, like, is it a, is it a number? Is it a, um, in a week I try and shoot for about 10 to 12, like applications, I guess, if you will, um, for the week, which again, sometimes doesn't always happen, but I kind of, um, if I, if I assess like midweek that I'm kind of falling short of my goal, or if I'm on track, cool, then I'll keep doing everything that I'm doing. Um, if I'm falling short, then I'll really kind of reflect on like, okay, what were my last two days? Where did I maybe struggle or was there any pattern that I can kind of identify just to be able to potentially change the trajectory for the rest of my week? Um, so I'll kind of just do a little bit of self-reflection or I'll honestly go on YouTube and be like, maybe I need some extra like sharpening up <laughs> on something. And I'll just kind of like take the learning aspect and be like, okay, maybe this is a week that I'm just going to gain some more knowledge um, and more practice. Um, so I'll turn on like a video, um, on YouTube and, you know, watch something on rebuttals or on, you know, mortgage protection or, you know, whatever it may be just to kind of figure out that there's something within like my recipe of the day is a little bit off. So it's now just kind of finding out what that is and kind of stopping in those tracks and adjusting before any more of the week goes by, if that makes sense. Protect you, protect your mind, right? It's, it's, yeah working for other people. It can work for me. I just need to figure out what's not working for me at this minute. And right, at this minute. All right. So let's talk about sales. So let's, you're, you've got a, uh, whatever you, you pick the lead, but I just go for it. I'd love to hear your, you know, ring, ring, you're open. What do you say? How do you take control? Like just go through it till you get to the financial inventory, whatever, whatever you, whatever are, you know, I want to call you Gigi because I love your name, but, <laughs> but, but whatever Giovanna, you, G. you can definitely call me Gigi if you want. G, well, you see you're a yeah. G and I'm a G. So two G's hanging out. Oh, there we go. Now we're Gigi. <laughs> okay. so, yes. But I want to hear what are the Giovanna isms? Like, what are the things that are you, that you kind of have kind of like, this is my little thing. And like, let's try this. Like you've got these like little, whatever, yeah. or if it's just, you just, sell insurance like a like a like a mad woman then great do that but i want to there's always like things we develop as we progress that that um make us like i know when i say this line that they're gonna i'm gonna walk yes. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hear a sigh on the phone because they're gonna go uh yeah that does make sense that does make sense she is right yeah. right so how, yeah what, absolutely so. um so my opener as far as um i mean you know i say hi hi man or hi grady just do it. I, I just always do it. Okay. I try to um, so I'll just open up and say, you know, hi, Grady. Uh, this is Giovanna Galliano. I'm just giving you a call here with the benefits office here in Arizona. Um, I was just calling to let you know that we did receive and process your request that was submitted yesterday uh, for the funeral and final expense coverage. I have your date of birth as 11-12-93. Is that correct? 
Um, I always like all after I say their date of birth, I'll confirm. So that should make you 29 years young today. If I'm correct, if I did my math right, I'll say that kind of verbiage. Honestly, I like as soon as I get somebody on the phone, the first thing that I want to do is connect with them on a personal level, like business aside, request aside, like not talking anything about that yet. So I'll really just kind of like listen for any type of, I guess, uh, indication that they drop of something that I could connect with them on. Um, so if I hear a baby in the background, I'd be like, oh, you know, is that your grandchild or, you know, whatever. Or if I hear a dog, oh, what type of dog do you have? Um, or something like that, like just to take it, it really helps the client, I think, from their walls up to their walls down. And they're immediately like not even thinking about the reason that I called. They're worried about like what I'm asking them about in their personal life or whatever's going on at home, which I think like connecting with them, um, like I said, on kind of a personal level before speaking about business, I think is super important. Um, it's going to help build rapport and it's really just going to make them more comfortable with you. Um, so from there, you know, I send my license, gain my credibility. I make sure that they like receive my text message and I send them like a copy of my business card um, and my state license. Okay. I'll let them know, you know, hey, if you want to look it up, you can, you know, use this link, this, this and that. Um, but I really try and I think connection is super important. And I think a lot of people, you know, maybe don't take the advantage of doing that right in the beginning and you kind of do it a little bit later in the call. But I think the earlier that you can do it or the earlier you can make them kind of laugh about something like people always laugh about the age thing. Like people love that. So I always do that every single call, no matter what. And then, you know, you'll have some people that like, don't make any, like don't even acknowledge that I said that. And I, I'm just like, okay, moving on. <laughs> I'll try again later <laughs> to connect with you. But um, it really doesn't happen that often. It's most people like respond to it how I want them to. Years so young. That's one okay. thing that I always do. Seven years young. You're 22 years yeah. young. Just something. Exactly. Oh yeah, that's you're just something. Yeah. Got it. Like I had a lady, she started busting up laughing yesterday. She's like, honey, that was so funny. I'm so glad you said that about me. I'm like, you're welcome. <laughs> and she loved it. And so we had like a really good conversation yesterday, but that's just like one example um, but that's, that's something I always do. And I think when you find those little things that work for you and your personality, like you've got to run with it. Like you've got to rinse and repeat. Like once you figure that out and people respond to it, well, you want to do that again, as much, you know, as much as you can on all of your future calls. Awesome. Kind of goes with consistency as well. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. So we'll keep going. So you get, you, yeah. so, but yeah, that's great. Keep so you've got them talking. You send them your license, your your business card. That's a new thing. So some people will send them their. They say, "Go get a pen, write down your license number." You send them a picture of their license through text, picture of your business card through text, and say you want to make sure they've got it right. Yep. That, that's what works for you. And you, it's kind of like we're working on a project together. Hey, did you get yeah. it? No, it hasn't come through. Let me clarify the number. I have this number. Do you receive text that? Well, that's my husband's phone. Oh, you know what I mean? Whatever. Like, so you're like working on, some, you guys have made a decision. We're going to work on this project together. Okay. Now it's accomplished. Oh, I see a picture of your business. This looks professional, right? Elevating, building credibility, work time on the phone, right? Longer we keep on the phone, greater chance we have to close. Exactly. Yep. And I still have them, you know, grab a pen and paper um, and, and do all of that. I have them write down my national producer number and then I'll say, Hey, you know, I'm sending over a copy of my business card, um, as well as with my state license. So you can see the names match and all that's good to go. Make sure that they get it. Um, then I kind of go into some power questions, you know, I'll reference. Okay. So with your age, you know, are you currently working, retired, disabled, um, kind of get a good idea of that. You know, are we looking for coverage for you and your spouse or just you? Um, that's again, just to take up an opportunity if it could be a, a two for one kind of deal. Um, I think like if you don't ask, you'll never know. So I think it's really important to, even if, you know, you don't think that they maybe even have a spouse, but they may say, oh yeah, you know, my sister might need coverage too, or something like that. Um, so I'll kind of go through some of those questions, um, kind of figure out, you know, where they're at as far as if they have coverage already. Um, I'll ask the details, you know, on that. Um, the three C's is kind of what we go by is the carrier, the cost and the coverage amount. Um, and then I kind of go into explaining the process, just letting them know, um, you know, we come from a little bit more on the medical side of things. We go through the medical questions, um, you know, discuss, you know, where you're at financially. We're going to customize a plan that fits your budget. 
Um, and then we kind of go into the uh, financial and, and health inventory. Um, and I go pretty extensive into the health questions and whatnot. I, and again, I do have the advantage of coming from the medical background. So I do have a little bit of knowledge, you know, on that piece of it. So I can kind of ask a little bit further, like detailed questions or about medications. And I kind of have a rough understanding of, you know, all of that. Um, but really just to get a good inventory on the client, because the more, you know, the better you're going to be able to help them really. Um, so I try to be pretty invasive as far as, you know, do you have any, you know, diabetic complications, you know, what medication are you taking? Um, you know, what is that taken for? You know, all of that. Um, and then I'll go into, um, just asking about their budget because we of course want to make sure that we can number one, get them approved, but also looking at a policy that makes sense for them and that they're going to be able to sustain, you know, if we're talking whole life throughout the rest of their life, because of course, if it doesn't, you know, make sense for them financially and they can't sustain that payment, then their family's never protected if the policy ends up lapsing and, you know, canceling in the future. And then of course that brings us a chargeback, which we don't want. So um, I try to be, you know, really thorough in, in the um, financial inventory and just kind of figuring out, okay, what is, you know, your income, what are kind of your major expenses? Okay. So we have about X amount, you know, left over and kind of like really map it out with them so that they understand that like we're really trying to get a good idea of where they're at as affordability. Um, so I'll kind of go through that um, and then really asking their their why. How do you determine the numbers? I was I was intrigued. So they make two thousand dollars a month. How are you? What 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 numbers are you going to pick to show them? So if they make about two thousand, so let's say after bills and everything, they have roughly about a thousand left over. Let's say. So, um, I would, if they had roughly about a thousand left over, not including like groceries that they pay, like, you know, day to day kind of necessity expenses. Um, like my, my highest option is probably going to be just under a hundred dollars a month. Um, I try and position it to where I want them to pick option B. Um, so I make option A slightly outside of their budget to where they could probably make it work or maybe eliminate something if they really, really want it. Um, but it's not like astronomically out of their budget because I don't want to like overwhelm someone or push them to the point of like discouragement before I get through the option that I actually want them to choose. Option B should be exactly perfectly within their budget and, you know, meeting their goal for the coverage as much as possible. Um, and then option C, I try and make it, like very much within their budget, no question about it. Got it. Like very much affordable for them. So that if they don't pick option B, then we know for sure they're probably going to pick option C if they're, you know, serious about moving forward. Sure. Okay. Sorry. That was good. I was loving it. No, hear. you're good. Um, so then we kind of go into the why. And that's where I also try and connect with them again. Um, if it's a lead that, they have um, the beneficiary name listed, then I'll definitely mention the beneficiary's name more so than, or, you know, I'll say, hey, your daughter or your children, you know, whatever it may be. Um, but I try and like, again, make that a little bit more of a personal connection. Um, you know, I kind of ask like, you know, hey, typically people are looking for, you know, this type of coverage for one of three reasons. Most commonly is to cover, you know, burial, cremation, kind of final expense coverage. And I kind of reiterate so that that financial burden is not left on, you know, your daughter, Jessica, or, um, you know, another reason may be for, you know, income replacement or mortgage protection, if they have a mortgage, of course. Um, and then, you know, simply just for legacy to leave behind, you know, what is your main concern? And I kind of let them tell me, you know, what exactly they're looking for. Um, I never want to ask like, okay, you know, how much are you wanting to pay? or, you know, anything like to, um, uh, I want to pay like, zero. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. You don't want to put yourself, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot kind of thing. So I don't ask questions like that. I kind of position it more as like a statement. Um, so then they tell me, you know, what they're looking for. Okay. You know, I want to make sure my barrow's covered and I'll say, okay, Grady. So just to make sure that I understand, it sounds like you're wanting to make sure that, you know, your daughter, Jessica does not, is not left with a financial burden of your burial cost. God forbid, you know, when you pass away. And I also try to really like tonality is super important, I think. Um, so I definitely change my tone when I'm talking about something that's like more sensitive um, because I feel like they really feel it through the phone. Like how I changed, you know, 
you don't want that financial burden to be left on your daughter, Jessica. Like I really try and shed a lot of light on that. Um, and that's again, building more kind of connection. So, you know, I'll, I'll reiterate what they told me. Um, and then I'll kind of, and then I go into like educational mode. Um, I really, and I used to do this in mortgage a lot and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I really like educating the client on what they're getting into. If you're going to be paying something month after month and you're, you know, trusting me to do this with you and, and get you approved, then I want you to know the full ins and outs of, of what you're paying for and what, you know, what is going to be beneficial to your family. Because when you talk to clients and they, you know, have coverage, but they don't know what type of coverage it is or how it works or what it includes, then, you know, I'm like, dang, like, I don't, like, I don't want somebody else to ask you about your coverage that I've gotten approved for you or that I've sold to you. And you know, nothing about it. Like, I think there's a lot of value in, in like having a real understanding of the benefits of the policy. And I mean, I think you can always like shed more light and people will always, most people I think will appreciate you educating them on that. So I really like, I go into like education mode, um, let them know about everything, you know, with whole life, with term, cashback term, whatever, you know, IUL, whatever it is. Um, and then at the end, I kind of ask like, Hey, do you have any questions on what we just went over? Like, do you have a full understanding of that? And some people will have more questions, but most people they're like, no, like that was totally clear. Um, I try and make it like as straight to the point as possible. I don't want there to be like too much fluff in there. So it's not confusing for them, especially when you're talking to people, you know, in their sixties, seventies, like you don't want to make it overwhelming for them either. <clears throat> so, um, I kind of educate them on that and then I'll, you know, let them know, Hey, there's two really important things when we go through this is that number one, we get you approved with the appropriate carrier. And that number two, this is comfortable and affordable for you on a reoccurring basis. So I'll bring that up again, just the importance of affordability. Um, and then I'll kind of, you know, pitch through my options, A, B, and C kind of target that the B option is the one that they're going to choose or that they should choose just based on their budget and their goals. Um, and then, you know, you kind of always are people want what they can't have. So you're never going to be like, you know, yeah, we can get you approved for sure. Like you never want to give that of course, yeah. um, because really I'm not making the decision anyway. So you never know what could happen. Everybody, but they don't let, it's not up to me. Right. Exactly. So, um, you know, let's, I, I say, you know, now Mary, like I said before, you know, the insurance carrier is going to be the um, final decision maker here on whether we can get you approved or not. But let's assume that you can qualify for all three of these options. Which would you feel most comfortable leaving behind to your daughter? You know, option A, B, or C. And then I wait. I, I will even sit there in silence for a minute and a half if I have to, for them to just kind of really sit with it, absorb it, and then make a decision. Um, and, you know, I just let them know. And even though we know that essentially if you're approved in most cases, if you're approved for one amount, then you're approved for all of the amounts, but unless it's coming back, you know, modified or graded, but, um, if you're just looking at kind of standard level coverage, um, you know, I always let them know, Hey, you know, if we <clears throat> do get you approved for this and you want to add on, you know, and go to option a in the future, we can always do that. I let them know kind of, there's always options to change things around and, you know, make adjustments if need be. And also if things change for them, you know, throughout life and they end up needing more coverage. So solid. So yeah. Betty says, yes, gets apps done, apps signed, everything feels good. What's the last minute, 30 seconds of your appointment? And then what do you do? Takeaways, texts, emails, thank you cards. What do you do to solidify the business to keep it on yeah. the Absolutely. Um, so at the end, you know, of course, congratulating them. I also let them know that I do come along with the policy. Um, a lot of us, like not just me, but a lot of us will do like the whole, okay, Mary, do you want the good news or the bad news first? And the good news, of course, is that they got approved and the bad news will like joke and say, oh, you know, you're stuck with me for life. I'm going to be your insurance representative moving forward. Um, so I'll kind of, I usually add that in, get them to laugh again. Um, and then I, I give them my personal cell phone number because I want them to know that this is not only a business transaction, but like I'm here to help you and your family, God forbid, on the worst day of their lives. Um, so I give them my personal cell, let them know they can reach out to me, you know, on or off business hours. 
Um, I then will send them a text message with all of their policy details. Let them know, you know, they're getting the um, policy packet, you know, 10 to 15 business days, and then I'll kind of re-solidify what we just got them approved for. Okay, Mary, so I want to make sure that you have an understanding that we got you approved for, you know, the whole life coverage with Aetna, you know, 25000 um, for the $100 a month. This is going to go into effect, you know, on the 15th of the month or, you know, whatever that day is. Know that, you know, that $100 per month is going to reoccur and bill you every 15th of the month. Do you understand that? And I'll say, you know, make sure you put it in your calendar so it's not a surprise to you, especially with people on fixed incomes. Um, and then I'll, you know, kind of make sure that I just say, you know, hey, they grade me on my quality and assurance. I want to make sure that you're fully satisfied with, you know, what we discussed today and, and with getting your approval in place. You know, do you agree that we kind of met all of your needs today? And they'll say, you know, yes. You know, I really, I don't think I've ever had anyone say no, <laughs> but I just kind of make sure that they're wow. fully satisfied. Um, and then, you know, I let them know, hey, we're going to update this, you know, in the system. If you get any other calls, just let them know you're taken care of and working with myself and, you know, call me if you need anything. Um, I have been, I, I will say, I, I need to get better about being more consistent with referrals. I think like, I haven't figured out my exact verbiage that I'm like in love with. So I'm still kind of like change things a little bit here and there, but I always do ask at the end, you know, if you have any family, friends, loved ones, anyone that needs help with this type of information or has questions, um, I've started recently adding in, I do a complimentary uh, policy overviews, even if you already have coverage, just to make sure that you're in the best position possible. And that, and people are always like, oh, wow, that's really cool that you do that. So um, I actually had a lady reach out to me and she's like, hey, you know, my sister has a policy. Can you take a look at it for her and just make sure that she's, you know, good to go. And I also have no problem telling people if they're truly in the best position possible. Like, especially if they're unhealthy and they've been in some, like been in a policy for a while, like a lot of times, you know, it just is best for them to stay where they're at. And I have no problem doing that. So I don't really look at it as like, some people could think that that could maybe be like a waste of time, like offering to do that for people. But I think it, like, there's more value in growing that relationship because I think that so, could help in so the future. Tell them accidental, sell them something. There's a, there's a cousin. Right. right. So what so, do you anything yeah keep let's finish let's see um so then i so i sent out the text the information um i sent out a, a handwritten thank you card um with a an actual business card in there um for policies that are larger i will send like an edible arrangement if it you know and i'll do that from time to time so i've done that a handful of times um but i send everyone a, a thank you card um and i try and get them sent out pretty quickly from after i write it um, I actually had a guy call me two days ago and he was like, thank you so much. I got your, your card in the mail. <laughs> and he's like, it's been so long since people like hand write thank you cards. So, which was cool. Cause I was like, that just kind of solidified that like what I'm doing is, is working and, and touching people. So I was happy to hear that feedback, but yeah, so that's kind of how I close it out. And then, um, I just kind of make a routine of going through my book of business. Like now that I'm almost in this role of coming up on the one year almost, um, that I'll kind of then start reconnecting with my book of business and my clients that have been, you know, on the books and seeing, you know, checking in with them and just kind of making that, um, further personal connection with them. They check, they grade me on my what was the words client I said my my uh quality they grade me on my quality and assurance mm -hmm. what you said yeah so just making sure that they're kind of like satisfied with what we talked about I get it it's of course i'm not graded but no, you know you're graded because if you <laughs> cancel you failed but if they say if they're happy you got an a plus yeah and that's such a clever way to do it because we always talk about they, they've got me. Why are you call me at 859 at night? They've got me here late. They've got me out here. They've got me. Why'd you call me nine times a day? They've got me trying to solve this, you know, close your case file out, Dolores. Why, why haven't you answered the phone all day? <laughs> I've been out in the yard gardening. Well, I came in the house. They, right. Cause our clients can associate with a, they, right. They mm -hmm. have a boss. They have someone they're listening to. They have someone they're beholden to responsible to need to ask permission from. So when you have a they as well, you're on the same level. You're not an elitist. 
You're not right. some big wig, you know, you know, insurance broker in Manhattan that's just talking down to the small people in the city, right? Or in, in the in the farmland. You are we are equal. We are one. Mm-hmm. They grade me on my quality and insurance. So are you happy with the job I've done for you today? Is that how you is that what you said? Yeah, pretty much. Like I just make sure are you satisfied with what we got in place for you today? Do you feel all your goals are met kind of thing? And most people will kind of give me feedback, even though I'm not really like necessarily like saying, Hey, what's some feedback, but in an indirect way, I'm kind of asking for it, which is just nice because I want to make sure that I'm presenting myself to the client in in the right way where they're receiving it in the right way. So I like when people are giving me feedback and I'll, I'll even ask, sometimes I'll be like, if there's any areas of improvement, like, please give me the feedback. I'm always open to hearing it. Cause I think constructive criticism is like one of the most important things in, in, I think being in an entrepreneur role, because, you know, you don't have like, I mean, you have your team that will give you reflection and whatnot, but I think coming from an actual client and then giving me any type of feedback, um, like I, I value a lot. So, cause I know that they're being honest at that point. Um, I love it. You're fantastic. There are a couple of things for referrals when to conclude that. And when you say, are you happy with the job I've done for you today? Perfect. Well, listen, Betty, how I build my business is either through clients that request coverage or referrals of people that are happy with the job I've done for them. So if you're happy with the job, is there anyone in your community, any friends, anyone in your family that you possibly could give me a few names, three or five names, or you, and when you say the number, you're then establishing that they need to give you a number is like, I have agents that'd be like, if you have like seven or 10 names, you could give me, and then they're like seven or 10, like they start to go, well, I have right. Before, right. If you say you have one or two names, well, I don't, I don't know of anybody right now. Most of my clients, they'll give me anywhere from five to 10 names. Do you have like three people that maybe, you know, if you're happy with the job I've done for you, I wouldn't, of course, I wouldn't do anything to embarrass you or to put you off. I just would go say, hey, you know, I just took care of Betty. She just got a whole life policy with us. And she thought that you may be interested in getting some quotes. Is that something you're interested in today, John? Right? So it's a simple way where you plugging it in, you're directing them. Yeah. And then you're giving them a number of who to give. Well, my, my, I, is anyone you, you know, and so these are cues you can pick up while you're doing the presentation. They play bridge, they play pickleball, they walk around the golf course, they're in a knitting club, right? Who are any, any girlfriends in your knitting club that we talked about earlier that maybe, you know, I could do a quick policy review for. And yes, yeah. it's, it's, you know, we, what we, the worst thing we want to do at the end of a sale is screw up the sale, right? And we always, we'll, we'll psych ourselves out and we'll go, if I say too much now, she may like, yell at me and take and cancel the whole thing. But it's also what you're doing is you're helping solidify because if they give you a few people, you know, they're stoked, right? right. So it's almost like a test to mm-hmm. how well is this? Or, you know, as a $490 a month policy and he, he's getting off the phone quick and he won't share, he doesn't give me any referrals. Don't spend the money too fast, right? Wait yeah. till it hits right. month six before you start to right. get <laughs> bank account. That's one way. In other ways, there's on, on FFL America, on the documents in, or downloads page is something called the emergency response network. An emergency response network is a concept where, hey, Betty, we just took care of you. God forbid something happens on that worst day. What we ask our clients to do is fill out this emergency response card with three or five people. You'll see the card when I email it over to you. But if you could put those people down for me, that way that I'm going to let them know that you got this policy. And so that if God forbid that some that when that worst day comes, they have my information to contact me so we can make sure we get this claim paid out fast. What is she giving you? Her closest people that she trusts. You call them, say, hey, Betty, put down your you as their emergency response and her emergency response network for the whole life policy. You just got to protect her daughter, Janie. You know, you know, Betty and Janie. Of course I do. It's my sister. Okay, perfect. Now, you know, I just wanted to do a, a quick, do you have insurance as well? Cause she mentioned that you, you know, I don't know, get some, get some point. You know, she mentioned you drive a lot for work. Now I'm, I'm a broker. I'm like, you know, then you have a chance, right? I'm licensed with 15 companies. I've been doing this. I've got hundreds of clients and, you know, do you have all of the life insurance coverage? You, you know, you come up with something, but that's a great way, two great ways. Are you happy with the job I've done for you? Give me three or give me five to 10 names. Yeah. Emergency response network where you're putting it more on a thing that's going to bend that you need to fill this out. And you can, and there's, there's full scripts on how to use it and the card that you mail the client, they fill it out, send it back to you. Now you, that's how a, a very simple way to get referrals, but yeah, I love your I also do. Go ahead. Out, oh, I'm sorry. I also do reach out to the beneficiary as well. So that's also a, a, a way of um, getting a referral essentially. So I'll kind of go through with them. Hey, 
you know, your mom, Mary just got this policy listed you as the emergency contact. Here's the details. You know, she wanted me to check in on you, see if you have coverage in place for yourself. And then that's another approach that I'll kind of do as a referral, which actually has happened quite a few times um, when I'm able to get a hold of that person. You know, sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult, but I'll usually put them in a group text with the with the client that I just closed so that they know that we're kind of connected. I'll send my business card and be like, hey, you know, we're looking, um, you know, looking to connect with you just to review this information, want to make sure you know kind of what avenue to take, you know, in case of an emergency happens. Um, and then I'll kind of go through it like that. And then at the end of it, I'll kind of, you know, say, hey, you know, which one of the carriers do you have, you know, in the state? What kind of coverage do you have? Something along those lines. Um, and then we'll kind of, you know, go into it. And it's then you kind of, you know, condense like your initial script because then you've already kind of built that relationship and credibility with their loved one that they're listed as a beneficiary for. So you kind of do almost like a condensed kind of script on or pitch to them um, and, you know, still go through medical and all that to make sure you're putting them in the best position. But that's kind of another way that I'll utilize the referral um, avenue as well. Well, Giovanna, you are, you're rolling, you're in the zone, protecting clients, you're investing in leads. Uh, we're going to get you back to talk about how you're doing with building, but I love a, a final, final call, final challenge, final words you have to all these new agents that are out there watching live, watching on YouTube that, um, you know, just some inspiration to leave them with. Yeah. Um, whether you are new or seasoned, like I, I think that you either, if you have an experience yet, or you have that, you know, that it's going to be an up and down roller coaster, but you just kind of got to push through that there is light at the end of the tunnel. You will, you know, you have a bad day, a bad week, but we don't have a bad month. And so you just kind of push through and keep on keeping on. Um, as far as sticking to your consistency, rinse and repeat of what you found that works for you, like keep doing that. Don't change what's not broken. Um, another thing though, that I'm, you know, whether you're within my agency or not, like I'm always open to help people. Um, so feel free to reach out to me, um, phone call, Instagram, whatever it may be. I can put my handles in the chat, but, um, I'm always willing to help anybody that needs it. Um, but I think just staying consistent and, and listening to, you know, what your mentors and your uplines provide to you as far as the blueprint of being successful in this business, like all you have to do is follow the direction, stay consistent and, and really keep you know, a positive mindset when it goes into it. Um, because, you know, like we said, there will be ups and downs, but you know, the highs are really high for a reason. So just keep on working hard and, and keep doing what you're doing, but G drop a GG in the chat below. <laughs> Put up, show her some love and appreciation. You were tremendous for cheering you on. It's, um, it's been a great journey, a good journey so far, and it only gets better and greater and more exciting as you continue to progress. I'm excited to cheer you on along the way. So thank you for your thank time you. today and appreciate you and keep, keep rolling. We'll talk soon. Bye for now. Absolutely.